Bonjour, today on Travelling Fabulously, I'm in the 10 largest gardens in Paris. That's right, the 10 largest gardens in Paris. I'm super excited. Why? Because I love a top 10. Top 10 Kylie songs, top 10 reasons why Madonna shouldn't have married Guy Ritchie and how she's gone wrong since then. Top 10 photos of Chris Helmsworth without any clothes on. <gasps> That's a good one. So come and join me on something even better. The top 10 largest gardens in Paris. You know what I say, whatever you do, do it fabulously. So why don't you come and join me on this week's episode of Travelling Fabulously. If you like a top 10 or anything about Paris, France or just fabulous people like myself, then subscribe and make sure you click the little alarm button. That way you'll get an email every time I release a new video. Who wouldn't want that? And if you want to say something nice about the video, put something in the comments. If you want to say something not nice, um something in the comments but seriously who can say something not nice about me and don't forget at any point in this video if you feel the need to share me around with your friends I love to be shared around do it go on so here I am in my first spot number 10 the Jardin de Ceres d'Autre at three hectares this garden comes in at number 10 You'd probably know it if you've been to the French Open, or Roland Garros as they like to call it here in France. It's those greenhouses that you walk past on the way to the gates of the French Open. Actually, technically part of the Bois de Boulogne, but we're not covering the Bois de Boulogne in this series because the Bois de Boulogne, well, it's a park, not a garden, or a jardin, as the French say. So there's actually five hothouses that were built in the 19th century, which house a collection of rare plants, as well as an aviary, which is probably what you can hear in the background. Let's pop to number nine. Down by the River Seine is number nine, Jardin Tino Rossi. Tino Rossi. At 3.1 hectares along the River Seine, in between the Institute de Mode Arab and the Jardin de Plants, is this fabulous garden, which also is a museum of modern sculpture. I'm just wondering if that's a bit of modern sculpture or an accident. Above the Montparnasse railway station is garden number eight, Jardin Atlantic, coming in at 3.4 hectares. Who knew? How many times have you been here and didn't even know that there was a garden above it? Number seven is the Nelson Mandela Garden at four hectares. The Jardin de Nelson Mandela is basically at the top of the Les Arles metro station. You get great views of the Bourse de la Commerce, which is that building that's been turned into a private art gallery, the St Eustace Church, and of course the iconic canopy of the Forum de Lars. Des Arles. Oh, another good use for an iPhone. How to tell if a pigeon just pooped on me. No, I think I'm safe. Mm. Okay, let's get out of here. Coming in at number six at 6.5 hectares is Jardin de Ranli. The Jardin de Ranli was created in 1860 by Baron Haussmann. Before Baron Haussmann took over and created a park, a Frenchman who admired Lord Ranli's success decided to create a dance hall here. I'm in the mood for dancing, romancing. Maybe not that kind of dance hall. But unfortunately, the plans fell through. So Baron Hausman decided to build a park instead. The Jardins de Trocadero is number five in at nine hectares in the 16th. It was created for the Universal Exhibition in 1937 and of course is known for its views of the Eiffel Tower. But the centerpiece of the gardens is the Warsaw Fountains with its 20 water cannons. So next time you're popping over to the Trocadero to see the view, why not walk through the gardens? Number four, 
the Garden de Champs Elysees, or as we call it in Australian, Garden de Champs Elysees. All right, maybe we don't call it that in Australian, but I call it that. The Gardens of Champs Elysees extend basically from the Place de la Concorde up to the roundabout of the Champs Elysees on both sides of the avenue. So you can, so you walk, can walk on the, on the avenue, avenue. Talk, talk on the, on avenue. the avenue. Okay, I think we've had enough of my songs, don't you? I do believe it's going to rain. Like you ever, I believed you when it said there was no rain today. I believed you like Whitney Houston believed she could touch the sky. I believe I can fly. Was that, was that Whitney Houston? I believe I can touch the sky. Think about, or was it Mariah? I can't remember, Mariah or Whitney? Anyway, I'll find out when I do the editing. But anyway, I believed you, Aki Weber, when you said it wasn't gonna rain. Now I have to go, because it's raining and I didn't bring an umbrella and my hair's gonna get wet. Yes, my hair's, I did say that. The weather situation at the moment. I'm going to bring you our next garden from a drier position and show you a bit of footage from my archives. Coming in at number three is the Tuileries at 22 and a half hectares. It was raining, so I couldn't actually go to the Tuileries. So I'm just going to show you some of the shots that I got from when it was snowing in Paris in the Tuileries. Did you know that the Tuileries gardens actually get their name from the tile factories which used to stand on the site where the Tuileries is located at the moment? Queen Catherine de' Medici built the Tuileries Palace back in 1564. And then in 1664, King Louis XIV's gardener basically built it into the style that we know of it as today. His name was André Le Nôtre. Thanks for that, André. Number two, and just missing from the top spot, is the Jardin de Luxembourg, coming in at 23 hectares. The Luxembourg Gardens were created by Queen Mary de Medici back in 1612. She became a widow and built the Luxembourg Palace to move into. There's 106 statues throughout the park, such as this one that I found when I was doing my macaron video. This is Queen Marguerite up here. Um, she was the Queen of France back in 1200, apparently. 1200 something. Not 100% sure. I think it says it on a plaque, but anyway. 1219 to 1295. It's a long rain. Finally, number one, the largest garden here in Paris, and the inspiration for this whole top 10 is some screaming in the background. Is the Jardin de Plant, the garden that I stumbled upon when filming my summer in Paris video. I loved it so much, it inspired this whole series, the top 10 largest gardens in Paris. So the largest garden in Paris is the Jardin de Plantes at 28 hectares. It's a nature retreat in the centre of Paris, or as we like to call it, a botanical garden. The Jardin de Plantes maintains a botanical school that trains botanists and there are around four and a half thousand plants arranged by family on just one hectare of this 23 hectare plot. Three hectares are devoted to horticultural displays of decorative plants. I love a good decorative plant. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Travelling Fabulously, the 10 largest gardens in Paris. I made it through without getting too wet. That was good. And I even learned a bit. I hope you did too. If you like this video, press the like button. Remember, subscribe and hit the bell notification so you get an email next week for more fabulous videos. Leave a comment in the link down below. And above all, remember whatever I say, whatever you do, do it fabulously. Tune in for next week's episode of Travelling Fabulously. You know what I say, whatever you do, do it fabulously. So why not join me on Travelling Fabulously? Mm -hmm.